Oh, wait, that's me. Hi, you can't even see me. Hi, welcome to the lounge. How are you doing to this evening on this lovely Friday night? And the energy is a little weird today, isn't it? A lot of uh, a lot of stops and starts, a lot of erratic energy, a lot of stuff going on. But we're here to help you bring it down, heal, ground, balance that nervous system. And today, I know you guys have all heard me talk about the nervous system quite a bit over the pandemic and over recent shows. And tonight, I can't wait to get into maybe why you're having some scattered thinking, maybe why you're going and going and going and all the time, wondering why you can't just relax and calm down, or wondering why at night when you're ready to go to bed, your mind just can't stop racing and you just can't stop, right? Trying to get that moment of calm and clarity and connection. Uh, it seems so simple. People saying, oh yeah, just get calm. Just love yourself. Just, just, you know, relax. Don't you hate it when people just say like when you're kind of upset and you're all over the place, just calm down and relax. It's like, you just want to be like, what? I, I can't calm down and relax, right? So we're going to talk about how your nervous system plays a big part in your intuitive development journey, your manifesting journey, and how integrating healing your nervous system is so important to your transformation and taking you to that next level in your life where it's not just the external things that you're going to fulfill, like money, status, prestige, a new home, a new relationship, money, you know, whatever it is, uh, a, a new career, you know, it doesn't have to be that. Because you all know, if you've been around long enough, you get those things, and there's still that void, there's still that something is missing, there's still that, uh, you know, that restlessness inside of you. And you're like, how do I, how do I calm this down? What do I do? And tonight, we're really going to delve deep into this, because it's something I talk about a lot on a surface level, and I don't really get in deep with it. But tonight, we're going to get in deep with it. So if you're here, and uh, you're one of our regulars, feel free to jump in the chat, say hello, say hi, I'd love to see who's here. Uh, let me know who you are. Oh, Lori, good to see you. <laughs> your energy kicked in at 4.30pm today. Painted half of your interior shed today. I am very, very excited for you, Lori. I know how hard that is. And I know how long you've been working on getting that motivation. So if that's one of your high energy times that we were talking about, I think you've just hit it. So make sure you document that one. Thanks for being here tonight, Lori. And anybody else who's here, just feel free to say hello, say how you doing, and we're here. Awesome. Well, I'm going to get into the show. I'm going to talk about who's coming on, our lovely guest expert. And as you all know, I don't bring anybody on here that I don't really believe in myself. And I've known Allie for the past couple years. I follow her Instagram before I actually connected with her. And her work uh, on the nervous system is just so comprehensive. It's just so uh, all encompassing and just so it goes so deep and she keeps it so simple. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Allie and then I'm going to have her come on here because I'm not really good at explaining exactly what she does. But tonight's show is going to be about healing your nervous system equals healing your life, which I truly believe because I started this work myself about seven years ago and it made such a difference with my intuitive development journey and my manifesting journey, uh, took things to a whole other level. So Allie Wise, I just want to say how much I adore her. She's a trauma resolution coach and author. She is, her focus is on trauma resolution, nervous heal, system healing, and self-connection, bringing you back to yourself, your true self. She's the author of two books, The Self-Attunement Workbook for Trauma Resolution and the newly released Embodied Healing, A Trauma Safe and Embodied Guide to Support Regulation, Repair, and Ease. In the last years, Ali has helped hundreds of people on their path of healing trauma and reconnecting to their deepest core, developing a unique approach to healing called the reconnection process. She is the creator of Awaken with Ali on Instagram, where she's helping nearly 100,000 people around the world on their path to healing trauma. So tonight's topics, we're going to talk about healing the nervous system. We're going to talk about changing your life by changing the relationship to your nervous system. 
and how the nervous system adapts to unresolved trauma and how restoring safety and regulation is at the core of changing those patterns that you always want to change tools to reconnect you to the body and how to empower intuition and sensitivity through the nervous system. So without further ado, let's welcome Allie Wise to the show. Hi, Allie. Hey. Hey, Marisa. How I'm are so you? To join you? Well, <laughs> I'm not sure how the energy is, yeah, but I'm pretty excited yeah. to join you. I'm and so your happy. Audience. Yes, yeah. I'm, they're excited thank you. too. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. We actually send out an email newsletter on Friday. So all of the, everybody knows about you coming on. And if they're not watching live, a lot of people watch on the replay. So I'm really excited that you're going to be coming here tonight. So tell us where you're from and what time it is where you are right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's pretty morning. So I'm joining you from Romania, from Europe, and it's 3 a.m. here. Yes. So good morning. <laughs> and we said we would we were going to pre-record but then Ali's like no yes, I want to yes. be on live with you know with the community and and people watching yeah. so the energy is it. not the same yeah the energy is the not, the not the same so I really wanted to give people an opportunity to ask questions and join us in this yeah. not, not, not quite easy topic eh? so we are going to speak quite too complex so <laughs> yes it deserves absolutely. like a live call Yes. So tell me a little bit about you. How long have you been a trauma resolution coach and mentor? And I know you mentor a lot of people one on one. And you have your Instagram, which has almost 100,000 followers, which is absolutely amazing. So people are resonating with what you're saying about the nervous system. They're saying, yes, that's me. Yes, I understand. You're speaking their language. How long have you been doing this? I've been doing this for the past four years. Like perhaps most of us, I came to this work because of you know all the all the symptoms you have mentioned. Me, yes, my, my path was one of uh, you know the suffering pushed me uh, on this path, and inevitably I came to trauma and healing the nervous system, which have played such such a big uh, role in my own healing journey. And yeah, it's, it's, it's like the path made me um, start this work of working with people. And it's amazing. Yes, I'm, I have worked with hundreds of people one on one. Yes, to, um, I, you know, people, people tell me I'm like a midwife. Yes, so I'm yes. helping people. Yes, I'm, because this, this journey of trauma resolution requires really a transformation. Yes, to be able to embark on this path, on this path requires such, a, such more courage, you know, like, um, and it's truly transformational. So, yeah, it's pretty amazing. I've never, I never thought about myself, I'm going to do this work, but it seems the work called me. <laughs> yeah, isn't it funny how, at the core of our deepest sufferings emerges our true calling to help others. I think that's amazing. It's like, kind of like you're really suffering with something you're able to go through the deep dark woods and overcome it. And it's kind of like, when I first talked to you, I'm like, look, everything you're writing on Instagram, I like nobody ever wrote stuff that I could say, yes, that's exactly how I feel. I mean, I, you know, was always on the path to self improvement ever since I was 16 years old, looking for, you know, to get involved in therapy or self reflection or meditation, whatever it was. And I would tell these professionals, you know, how I was feeling. And they would look at me like, what are you talking about? You feel this thing in your body? Like, what is what are you feeling? And I'm like, I can't describe it. But I have this feeling inside of my body, or I'd say something. And it almost felt like they would look at me with a deer in the headlights. And, and then I almost felt like, oh, my God, I, nobody even understands my pain. Nobody even understands the suffering I'm, I'm going through. And I realized that, like, just talking to people about my problems wasn't really changing the patterns. Like, I could talk incessantly to my friends, to my family, to therapists, to professionals who understood trauma. And they were like, what are you experiencing? I don't like I don't get it. And it just made me feel very isolated and very alone. And now that this topic of trauma coaching is kind of a little more mainstream, just over the past couple of years, I came across your Instagram. 
And when I first spoke with you, just by having a, a discovery call, we had a call, you explained to me like some of the things I told you how I was feeling. You're like, oh, yep, get it, get it. And you, everything oh. was like, I'm like, this is so weird. Nobody's ever gotten this. And you knew so much more that I could combine 10 therapists together in my life. You knew, knew more within a half hour than any of those professionals. And you're like, that's because you walk through the fire, you came out the other side and you know how to lead somebody through. Um, so I just want to give you that, that you speak the language of people that need like that other people may misunderstand. And it's so such important work that you're doing, you know, such important work. So what did you, what were you doing before you got, you know, decided to make the transition and go to this work? What was your life like prior to this? <laughs> Yeah. So first, I'm speaking the language of, of the nervous system. Yeah? So this is why people really get uh, because traditionally we embark on this uh, journey of healing, particularly healing trauma from a very, a very cognitive approach. And that's not where you know, our problems stem from. Yeah? So our problems don't stem from the cognition. Our problems stem from a very deep level, which is the nervous system, the energy, the body. Yeah, that's where, you know, when we were children, we didn't experience life primarily through the cognition. We experienced life primarily through the nervous system, which was very open, very receptive to our environment, through the body, again, very open, very receptive. So that's the layer that we need to engage. So when you look at your symptoms, when you look at your life, when you look at how you are experiencing life and how your system or how your body responds to life from the lens of the nervous system, like everything makes so much sense. Everything is shifting. Like, of course, my system is responding in this way. Of course, I cannot, you know, I go to bed, I want to sleep. And since my body is still awake and still wants to, you know, to work, to be productive and it cannot enter into that phase of rest. So everything makes so much sense. So uh, before this, it's very <laughs> strange. Yes, I, I was working in actually a fashion company. Yeah? So really? that was my job. Yes, I was working in a fashion company. I was a manager there. I was living my life, <laughs> uh, hiding my own suffering. Yes, like it's very common to actually suffer, you know, in, in silently, not sharing because, you know, just like you, I would feel like something is totally wrong with me. I'm alone in this. Nobody is going to get me. That's yes? a lot of shame. Mm. So in the summer of 2015, I was involved in a car crash. And although like my life has been on a, you know, trauma reinforcing pattern, I was never aware. I was never, you know, engage uh, in that aspect but after that car accident like everything spiked to a, like th thousand degree intensity mm -hmm. all the symptoms everything and really i was so in such a low place um riddled with so many symptoms that made absolutely no sense to me um and yeah that 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 put me um on this path so i was just you know on doing my work as a fashion manager absolutely nothing to do with this work <laughs> yeah but yeah i think that you know when i look back and even you know i share this with uh, with clients um that was in a sense my 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 strength because i came to this work like completely open to learn completely open to realize like what is actually happening with me and like why my system is responding in this way so coming from that open perspective open mind really made me so develop that capacity you know of, of intuition uh, and stepping back asking questions yeah? like really going to to the core um of, of my problem of my challenges so now yeah, from, from 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 a fashion manager to a trauma <laughs> resolution coach i'm not sure who else can <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> amazing. <say> this. <laughs> I mean, I know that I had no idea what the word nervous system was until, if, you know, six, like six or seven years ago, had no idea that 
the big T trauma had anything to do with me at all. Um, so it's like, where do you, like, I used to look into spiritual, you know, spiritual solutions. And maybe it's Reiki. I need to go to our body worker or acupuncture, or maybe go see a shaman and help them release my energy or whatever. And while all those things are great, it doesn't treat the symptoms and the, and the patterns that are really going on in my life. And it, and it wasn't like a one size fits all. Like I could just have one session with somebody and everything was, everything was done and over with, right. The, the, the healing is in layers, but I didn't know what these terms were. And it wasn't until recently that these terms became more mainstream, you know, on social media. So how did you know when you were suffering that deeply? How did you know? How did you know where to turn? Like, how did you know th- how to find the word nervous system or trauma? Like, how did you know that that was that was the direction. Did, did somebody show up in your life like magically and be like, Hey, (laughs) this is what it is. Like, how did you find out? Yeah, no, uh, nobody showed up miraculously to uh, show me what happened is that my system was and still is to a such degree of high sensitivity that absolutely nothing worked for me, no matter what I was trying, my system was in this state of backlash backlash, you know, like any kind of method, modality, practice, technique would not actually um, impact in any way my system. Mm -hmm. So that was the first thing that, you know, made me wonder like, okay, what's actually happening here? And I was on this healing path for some years. And then I tried something from not actually being so aware of the nervous system. And what happened is I re-traumatized the system. I pushed too much with the modality and I kind of ended up re-traumatizing my system. That was the first moment when, you know, something um, lighted up and I said, well, I think this has to do with the nervous system. That's because my, my whole system, my whole body system, would enter into this state of collapse. Yes, like I could not move forward, no energy. And when I put together the things, you know, I was pushing through and how my body was um, feeling in those moments, I kind of made sense like this is, has to do with the nervous system. And you know, when you put something out there and mm-hmm. like, okay, what is actually happening? Like the universe begins to, to offer you answers. And that, you know, like through a synchronistic event, I came across um, trauma work and nervous system work as with really pioneers in, into, this, um, into this world. And through my own experience, I kind of begin to realize like, okay, yes. So what I want to share is this. We come into this world in potential really so open so receptive nothing is quite of set in stone or you know there is something set in stone but not you know most of our blueprint the blueprint that we are going to engage in um, in life so we kind of come up very open now depending where we come into this world yes our environment the relationship the early relationship the culture that we are raised then our nervous system and our brain begin to adapt to that environment, to those relationships, to those close relationships in particular. And based on that um, environment, yes, I'm going to develop a blueprint. Yeah? My, mm. the, the nervous system really at very, very basic level is the network, yes, the neural network through which I'm engaging life, yes, the, the network through which I'm experiencing myself, I'm experiencing life. And so it's very adaptable, it's very changeable, yeah. So it, it, it adapts to the environment that is uh, experiencing. So depending on that, my nervous system begins to develop certain patterns, and based on that my nervous system is going to develop a pattern to really feel safe yes with its own experience and with the world and with others or my nervous system is going to develop patterns to feel threatened yeah so it's experiencing life and the environment as safe 
or as a danger. And if my system, my brain, my nervous system develop this pattern of, or, or this assumption, yeah, this subconscious assumption, oh, there is danger, the environment is dangerous, or relationships are dangerous, that's going to be the blueprint that, you know, it's going to repeat. It's almost like I say to the universe, this is what's true for me. Relationships are unsafe. The environment, the world is unsafe. So if I put that out there, if that's the blueprint, if that is what I say to the universe, that is what I'm going to experience. Yes? It's almost like that's going to be the lens, the perception through which I engage in life. And as an adult, you know, I develop my cognitive capacity. And I realize, well, you know, this person I'm living for the past 10 years, well, it's not dangerous. It's a safe person. However, my body is going to say different. My body is going to say, no, that's a threat. That's a threat. And then I'm going to have all of these reactions, strange reactions, or I'm going to have all of these symptoms and mysterious symptoms that nobody seems to get through that. And I'm wondering like, what's happening with me? What's wrong with me? But from the lens of the nervous system, everything begins to make so much sense because that's the blueprint on a very deep visceral level. Your nervous system feels like relationships are unsafe. Yes, and right. particularly if we felt unsafe in our primary relationships, mm -hmm. it's going to show up particularly in our intimate uh, relationships. Yeah, so and let, let me just do... ask you, let me just ask yes. you really one question before I forget. This is all subconscious, correct? Because it's not like we're walking around saying we think relationships are unsafe. It's just people are cycling through these patterns and feeling like they're sabotaging maybe a good situation or pushing things away that are good, but attracting things that are part of their pattern. This is not that blueprint you're talking about is subconscious, correct? Yes, it's subconscious. Yeah. So the body yeah. and the nervous system are part of the subconscious. As a body, right. it's very automatic. So when we refer to the nervous system, primarily we refer to the autonomic nervous system. That mm -hmm. part of us that has an automatic blueprint that assesses if life is safe or life is dangerous, if relationships are safe or if relationships are dangerous. And... When you say, you know, I'm self-sabotaging myself from the perspective of the nervous system, what happens is the nervous system protects against the things or the nervous system doesn't feel safe with the things I actually want. Yeah? So I want intimacy. I want deep connection. I want success. I want abundance. But my nervous system doesn't feel safe with that. Yeah? My nervous system kind of protects. So I want to expand my business and all of a sudden I find myself procrastinating. I find myself unable to have the energy to move forward with expanding my business. And then I begin to ruminate and say, why am I self-sabotaging? What's wrong with me? Mm. Yes, and I need to do all of this work. But in reality, my nervous system feels unsafe with success. My nervous system feels threatened by you know, putting myself out there, being seen, being vulnerable. So if those experiences of vulnerability, of, you know, being able to regulate your own emotional state, if those experiences, if intimacy don't feel safe for the nervous system, you can do so much, but, you know, it's not going to land. It's not going to land on that level. So your nervous system is constantly going to protect against the experience rather than feel safe. Yeah? So your nervous mm -hmm. system is not going to be your ally. It's going to be, you know, always like protecting, keeping you in that small bubble, actually that opening up, keep, uh, supporting you to move forward. So really the nervous system plays such, such an important uh, role. So in a sense, I don't have to engage with all of these manifesting tools and manifesting techniques. What I have to do is take a step back and see, okay, why my nervous system is not feeling safe with intimacy? Why my nervous system is feeling threatened by, you know, my partner being around me in the house or, you know, all of this. 
Uh, yeah, I get that. <laughs> all of this. Yeah, all of this. Yeah. Experiences. And then begin the work, uh, which is kind of very practical, experiential work at the level of the body and the nervous system. Like really, when we have lived our life such in disconnect from, you know, this, this level of experience, because most of us, we have engaged life primarily through the cognitive mind, yeah, through the intellectual. So that is how we actually, if we pay attention, that's the lens through which we engage life by thinking. Yeah, by thinking, I'm thinking about my relationship. I'm thinking about, you know, my career. I'm thinking about what I'm feeling. So everything gets filtered through the thinking mind. And we are complex beings. We have so many layers. We have so many dimensions of experience that we are unaware of, that we are disconnected from. And if my imprint, if my traumatic imprint is, is at that level of the body and of the nervous system, I can talk about my problems as long as I want, but nothing is actually going to change on that very deep level right. of experience. Right. Yeah. And let me ask you, like, when you talk about, I, I have so many clients that I'll say, but Marissa, I want that intimate relationship so bad. I want that connection. I, I really want it. And why is it not happening? Like, it seems like some people are just not aware of some of the symptoms they are experiencing. So what are some of the symptoms if, if the audience is kind of like, well, what would I be experiencing if I was pushing away that intimacy or, you know, I'm saying I want it, but things aren't happening. What kind of symptoms would people be experiencing so they can kind of notice that? Yeah. So first, in order to uh, get the knack of what the nervous system is and really come in attunement with your own nervous system, we kind of have to begin to connect back to our bodies. Yeah? So I cannot listen. I cannot be aware of something I'm disconnected from. So in a sense, I have to take a step back and expand my level of, of experience towards to include more of my body, to include more of my nervous system, because otherwise I'm just going to have such a small, you know, perception of the actual symptom. Um, so some of the symptoms are like very strong and mysterious reactions. Yes, in in, in intimacy, I'm actually going to lash out so my system is going to lash out whenever there is the potential of a conflict my system is going to lash out or completely shut down numb withdraw as i'm playing the uh, the avoidant or um i'm going to blame the other person primarily for for the way i'm, I'm feeling as rather than connecting back uh, to myself um, I'm going to repeat patterns. I'm going to choose like the same kind of um, the kind the same kind of a person. Yeah. So my relationship are going to have a blueprint when I'm choosing perhaps an abusive partner, or an, an unavailable partner. Yeah? So when I look at my relationship, it seems that I'm repeating a pattern. Yes. It's almost like my system is rehearsing in the background a story it's putting that out there like this is the kind of match that you are having and because i'm unaware of my own trauma blueprint i'm also not resourced enough yes it's not only that i you know the person comes into my life is like why i'm engaging with that particular pattern yeah? so like, why am i choosing to have a relationship with you know an abusive man or an emotionally unavailable man. That that's because I don't see myself, you know, that that particular dynamic. I don't see how there is a part of me that is emotional unavailable for relationship, and then that projects in my life. And then I'm, you know, I'm choosing to stay in relationship with that man, thinking, well, I can change, you know, if I uh, working so hard to change the other person or working so hard, you know, to change, um, you know, to change myself or be different, you know, be different in the process. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I have had conversations again with clients, with even friends who would be in a relationship with somebody unavailable, not committing, uh, not returning their calls, uh, 
disappearing for days at a time or whatever. And the person, the, the person that was chasing felt all these emotions. So when I would say to them, well, you are also emotionally unavailable. It was like, no, I, there's no way that I'm emotionally unavailable. It's that person. And can you explain why that would be that the people that are attracted to emotionally unavailable people are emotionally unavailable themselves? So as I said, that's a, we, we attract so many kinds of people. Yeah. But I'm going to engage the pattern the moment that, you know, I'm kind of disconnected from, I cannot see it in myself. And so, of course, we, we will say, no, I'm not emotionally available, unavailable. I'm so emotionally available. But then, you know, why do you find yourself in a relationship with someone who is not? Yes, because at the, at the nervous system level, there is a part of you that is actually a match for that particular, um, for that particular dynamic. So it's only when I'm disconnected from that, from that part of me, from that level of experience, I'm going to project it on the other. So the moment I become aware of that, the moment I become, oh, okay, yes, of course, there is a part of me. But most of these things, they are just buried deep inside. That's on a very subtle level. And we are not aware of them. Or, you know, I can understand them intellectually. Of course, yes. I am emotionally unavailable because, you know, something that I have experienced in my childhood. But the reality is that actually experientially, I have to get in touch with that level um, of experience. I have to reconnect with that part of me that is emotionally unavailable. And even if it doesn't make sense, just by asking the question with curiosity, Okay, I wonder, is there an emotionally unavailable part of me that is, you know, that I'm seeing through that lens that is choosing the relationship for me? Yeah, because when we are not aware of these dynamics, yes, and the, the part of me that is emotionally unavailable, it's kind of going to be in the in the driver's seat. So it's going to choose for me. I, like I'm not when I'm not seeing it, it's you know, it, it it's subconscious, so it's going to choose um, for me. So I have to take a step back and ask the question first. Okay, this is very curious. I'm just engaging in this. Like, what's my role in this, in, in, in this dynamic? Like, what is my role in this? What, from which, you know, level of experience uh, have I engaged in this, uh, in this relationship? Yeah, and two, emotional unavailability. Uh, if there is an emotional person that's, avoiding and the other person is chasing that emotionally unavailable person having all these emotions of course they don't think they're emotionally unavailable because they really want to connect with that person but if i look at it through the lens of the nervous system it is the safest place to be because subconsciously they know that this person is not available and that's the only way that they can experience true vulnerability because they really know deep down in the subconscious that that person won't ever challenge them to really have to be open or vulnerable would that be somewhat true yeah. yeah from the perspective of the nervous system we are always going to go towards what feels safer yeah what right. feels safer what is uh, yeah what is that blueprint that we are rehearsing because the nervous system and the brain they work best when there is familiarity yeah? whenever i repeat something for so many years that is so familiar and that is what I'm going to uh, repeat. So for, for the dynamic of avoidance, you know, and more anxious, yeah, that's the common uh, dynamic. Yeah? So people are going to, they, they are safe places. Yeah? They are safe places. The anxious is going to feel safe, you know, by chasing the other person because that is um, the imprint of connection. That is how the nervous system um uh, you know realizes his connection for the from the perspective of the nervous system that is connection yeah? like chasing people yeah? like being um being with its own discomfort it's really unsafe so i have to chase the other person i have to seek connection i have to be in connection without being in connection it feels very threatening yeah so that's the system who was not supported to find safety being on its own to find safety mm -hmm. 
and security being on its own. So of course it's going to chase, of course, because that feels safer rather than being with yourself, being, you know, with your own uh, emotions, with your own body. From the other perspective, from the avoidance, yes, that's the, uh, that, that's the nervous system who has, it's the opposite, yes? It's safer to be alone. It's safer to engage with its own discomfort, yes? To solve all of this on its own. So it's not going to want connection. It's going to avoid connection because that is what's safe, avoiding. So each nervous system has protected in different ways. And then now we are just playing out the protections. We are just playing out the trauma and not actually, yeah, so the pattern dominates the relationship and not actually, you know, the adult conscious self. And so each system has protected against adversity in unique ways. And now we are just playing out. One doesn't find safety in relationship the other one chases the relationship because that is how it finds safety so, yeah. what about what about the combination of the person that has both anxious and avoidant tendencies and could be either one that seems like crazy but i've met people like that yes, there and I want, you know like one relationship they're the one chasing and the other relationship they're the ones avoiding so it's that pendulum. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be so the, the avoidant pattern is going to show up perhaps in more in intimate relationships. The anxious perhaps is going to show up more in professional relationships or friendships or the other way. Mm -hmm. So each pattern it's going to show up depending on what what is the level of the threat I'm experiencing? Like, with what my nervous system doesn't feel safe. If my nervous system doesn't feel safe with vulnerability, with emotional regulation, it's going to show up as yes, more in intimate relationships. As if my system has protected by being in this hyper um, independent state, like overachieving state, yes, it's going to show the anxious, it's going to show more in the professional um in the professional aspect so depending on the level of threat what is threatening to my nervous system that is where i'm going to rehearse that particular um, pattern so from the perspective of the nervous system we have to look what my system is protecting against what my system doesn't feel safe so if i really want to get to the root cause if i really want to get down you know, to that basic level of experience, I have to ask these questions. What my system feels unsafe with? What my system protects against? And then I have the answer. Well, yes, I feel my, I feel my system is really unsettled with intimacy, with putting myself out there, with being seen, with being heard, or with expressing my needs as with mm -hmm. expressing my truth in relationship with the, the key is like most of us we were not supported or encouraged to be ourselves in relationship so my nervous system doesn't know it doesn't have a resonance for authenticity equals you know safe to be in relationship it doesn't know it doesn't know it doesn't have that 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 blueprint right there and then if all my life I have been rehearsing how to not be authentic in relationships, then that's going to, you know, play out. I'm going to seek strategies in a very subconscious way on how to hide, as how to play various uh, dynamics. So my nervous system really doesn't feel safe with authenticity and relationships. It feels mm -hmm. safe with, you know, protection, with protecting um, in relationship. So that feels threatening. Mm. Now, what about uh, the symptom of constantly going, constantly doing, constantly being busy, constantly feeling if we relax that we're being lazy and we have to produce and having that constant pressure to go and do and go and do uh, and can't relax? Is that is that a symptom of nervous system, you know, issues and dysregulation? Yeah, it's actually a very common issue of nervous system dysregulation of a nervous system that 
um, found safety in by engaging in this dynamic, by always being busy, by always being active, by always staying in this hyperactive state. Because what happens when you stop doing this? You are then faced to be with yourself, to be with your own body, to be with your own emotions. And that mm. feels quite threatening. The level of discomfort that we begin to experience feels quite threatening. So it serves me best to always be doing because that gives me a kind of satisfaction, you know, like I'm doing something and then I'm achieving something, whether, you know, when I, when I relax, when I rest, that brings up all the layers of discomfort and my nervous system is not yet safe to engage with that. The nervous system is um, experiences, yeah, functions on a very core cycle, which is activation and rest, activation and rest. It's almost like day and night. What happens throughout the day? Everything is energized. Everything is awakening. Everything is in, it's in this dynamic state. And what happens at night? Everything goes into the state of rest, rejuvenation, restoration. That is also our biology. This is the core cycle that our biology functions. So there are moments when I want my system to be dynamic, to release energy, to engage in activity. But I also want moments when my nervous system restores, yeah, it's like comes on the other side, deactivates, releases whatever the you know, accumulation from the day and restores. So it comes to balance, it comes to balance. For most of us, Depending again of our trauma dynamic, the nervous system is kind of stuck into the busyness, into the activation, unable to rest, which is what you were referring earlier. At mm -hmm. night, I want to sleep, but it seems my nervous system is still in that state of activation. It seems my nervous system has forgotten how to rest, or even ha ha uh, it doesn't find that you know a safe and familiar to rest to rejuvenate. It doesn't even think that that's even a possibility. So the familiar for my system is stay active, stay busy, stay engaged, keep doing. That's the familiar. And whatever my nervous system is familiar with, that's going to repeat. But again, the brain and the nervous system, they are not so conscious, you know, they are not mm -hmm. like part of the cognition. They just play out some patterns. But I know I really need rest, you know, I can feel. But in the background, what my nervous system knows and is familiar with, no, stay active. This is what we have been rehearsing for the past 20 years. Why now you want to change and rest? Yeah, like that's not familiar for us. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I feel in this state of collapse. I feel in this state of freeze, of shutdown, of, you know, procrastinating always, not having energy. Everything feels confusing, fuzzy. So I don't know what happened. That is the case when the nervous system is kind of stuck on the other um, phase, which is too much rest. Yeah? So too much rest or too much activation. That These are going to be the states where the nervous system is more dysregulated towards. Either too active, unable to rest, either too immobilized, too shut down, unable to release energy. Yeah? So. Mm -hmm. The first one, the nervous system doesn't feel safe with rest. The second one, the nervous system doesn't feel safe with energy, as yes, with mobilizing energy within the system. So it's just going to be stuck in one of those um, phases. Yeah. Does, does this make sense? Yeah, and I, the other one I wanna ask you about to talk about, because it's hard for me to describe it, is when you have all this energy going on in your body, right? And you're anxious or you're angry or whatever, and then you just start like scrolling on your like news, just sitting there scrolling, but you're not reading anything, but yet you can't move. Like you're, mm. you're just agitated and then you just sit there and you scroll on your phone. But yet like your body is experiencing all this agitation and you just, what I call doom scrolling. <laughs> and then you're not even reading anything, but then you're like not able to really move around either. Can you talk about the, the freeze state? Can you talk a little bit about that nervous system state a little bit? Yeah, that's the nervous system who actually is experiencing both 
dynamics. Eh? Extremely active inside, like the energy is so mobilized inside, but at the same time, the nervous system doesn't yet have the capacity to release that energy, mm. to regulate that energy. And it's going to feel stuck in that dynamic, yeah? too active, but unable to do something with that energy, to regulate that energy. It's like riding a horse and giving that horse um, different messages like move and stop, move and stop. Yeah? So it's very conflicting. Your nervous system doesn't know, okay, which one do I have to do? Because, you know, there is threat coming from both of them. Yeah? Like, move but no don't move stay and that's the that, that's the freeze stay and by distracting with social media is a coping mechanism that in that circumstance when i when my system doesn't have access to resources when i'm con unconscious of what's happening within my own body that's the best you know distraction yeah that's the way mm -hmm. my nervous system kind of regulates a little bit that intensity that discomfort because i have access to no other resource yes i i don't yet have the capacity you know my nervous system doesn't yet have the tools and the resources to sit with that discomfort to regulate that mm -hmm. um that discomfort and then distraction yes on social media staying with that it, it's kind of helping uh, the nervous system, uh, short term, but that's not the long term pattern that we want to engage if we want to support the nervous system on a very deep level. So it's very common. And without understanding the nervous system, without being aware of this level of experience, what is that I'm going to get out of this way? Something is totally wrong with me. Like what's happening here? Yes. Why am I experiencing this? There is something you know, unusual, something completely uh, wrong with me. I, like things don't make sense. But when, again, from the perspective of the nervous system, everything makes so much, uh, so much sense. It's a very common yeah. pattern, the freeze one. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're almost coming to the hour of the show and I could talk to you for another two hours. So before we um, get to your work, Ali, and what you do in your books and how people could get in touch with you, I'd just like to put it out there to the audience who's ever listening right now if you're out there and you have something you want to ask about the nervous system or if you need some clarification about something you're experiencing or just have a question now is your chance over the next 10 minutes before we end the show and so feel to, so feel free to pop it in the chat if you have a question or you have a question about a relationship dynamic or just a work dynamic or how you're feeling or sensations that are going on in your body or questions about what is you know this term that you guys are talking about, feel free to pop it in the chat and ask and we will get your answers over to you live. And while we're waiting for people to ask a question, if they'd like, Ali, would you like to talk about your new book that you just released? Absolutely. But before that, I really want to say just one more thing. Yeah, so the topic sure. of today's conversation is like change your life by changing your nervous system. And what what, what we want to uh, speak with from that place is we want to make the nervous system safe with whatever we want to experience in life. It's yes? like deep intimacy, connection, success, abundance. My nervous system needs to feel safe with that level of experience because if my nervous system doesn't feel safe with that experience, it's constantly going to protect against that. Uh, so change your life by changing your nervous system, change your life by making your nervous system feel safe with whatever you want to call, uh, to call in your life. And that starts, the first step is make a U-turn, make a shift and engage more your body, engage more, be more curious. Like I wonder how my nervous system is experiencing life. I wonder how my nervous system has learned Yes, well, what is familiar for my nervous system? And that's the starting point uh, for all of us. So yeah, yeah, thank you so much for- Absolutely. For, for the opportunity. So my work is um, around trauma resolution, nervous system and self-connection, as you uh, mentioned um, earlier. And 
in order for me to put all of this information out there, I had this impulse, this creative impulse of writing books. And I wrote two books. The first one is the Self-Attunement Workbook. The second one, which I have just launched this, uh, this week, it's called Embodied uh, Healing. Um, and all, all this information that we have shared here is in that book all the foundation, all the information, all the, you know, it, it answers the question, why the pain, yeah, why the protection, why it's not safe for my nervous system, and also offers tools on how to repair the relationship with the nervous system, how to support the nervous system, come back into that state of safety. Again, with whatever experience I want to call um, into my life. Everybody who is interested, they can join me on my Instagram page at Awaken with Ali, and they have there all the information. I created a special discount for your audience, and they can benefit of 50% discount using the code Lounge15. And I hope this serves everybody. Yeah, and can they get like they go to your Instagram and go to Awaken with Ali? Can they then get the link to buy your book? Yes, on okay. on my bio. Yes, on okay. my bio they find the link to buy uh, the books. Um, yeah, everything is uh, is in there. Yeah, I can't wait to get this book myself and and read it because, you know, you've been such a wonderful resource for me for many years. So, it's it's yeah. going to be great. You know, we don't engage the the system from the academic perspective. This is already a, quite a complex, you know, when you speak about the nervous system, you know, like, okay, what is that, you know, experientially, what yeah. that does for me, you know, like, how is that going to help me in my life? And I did my best to actually, you know, distill to all of those complexity and make this very, very practical. Yeah? Like you have a nervous system and this is how your nervous system learned to survive and this is why you know it's repeating this these patterns and this is what you need to do in order to um shift in order to rewire some of those patterns yeah so very practical i'm just putting this in the chat uh for the promo um that way uh let me just put um to connect with ali this is all in the description by the way of this video so if you just go in the description it's right there also the link you could just click on it but i'm going to put it in the chat as well to connect with ali just doing this right here um follow her on the ig awesome this has been you know you've really gotten very deep with us on the show tonight and it's you know I think people are usually very active with their questions. And I think people were just really taking it in and, and really listening. Uh, I find that when our audience really loves a guest, they don't talk. <laughs> they don't ask questions because they're just so immersed in what you're saying. And I think you had so much uh, information that people just had to pay attention tonight and listen. So I'm just so grateful that you came on. And like I said, uh, if you want to get the new book, um, this is for our lounge members only, the people that are watching the show and who we call our lounge nights, the people who watch the show loyally. Um, you can go to Allie's Instagram, which I put into the chat um, and get the 15% off of her new book, Embodied Healing, using the code lounge15. And uh, make sure you get that because it will be expiring soon. Uh, so let me uh, pull up the other banner here to follow Allie. And uh, Kathleen has a really good question if you want to answer before we end. Yes, such, uh, a, such a great question that, you know, yeah. I think so many of us resonate. Yes, if your childhood yeah. relationships were stressful and unsafe, how can you make a new turn? I think we kind of tackled a little bit the question. The first step is to engage more your nervous system to actually, so you know cognitively that your relationships were stressful and unsafe, 
but how that translates at the level of your nervous system, what that translates in the present moment for your nervous system. Yeah? Even by asking the question, okay, you know, well, well, what part of me has experienced that stress, felt stressed and unsafe in, um, in a relationship? So the first step is beginning kind of a little bit of separating and engaging your relationship engaging your nervous system in a more relational way yes yeah? so like experiencing yourself in a relationship to your body in a relationship to your nervous system so that you can understand what are the unmet needs for your nervous system and for your body if your nervous system still feels unsafe with relationships that means that your nervous system still has unmet needs so the first step is, okay, what are the unmet needs that it's now my responsibility, it's now my role to see how can I meet my own needs as an adult. Needs that were supposed to be met as a child, but they were never met. And now it's my, it's, it's my role. So the first step is to shift, to turn towards your body towards your nervous system, experiencing yourself in relationship to your nervous system and asking the questions, what still feels unsafe? What is the unmet need? Yes, what is that I'm not um, aware of when it comes to the nervous system? And it's a process, nervous system rewiring. It, you know, it's a process. It takes time to really shift this pattern on that level um of experience and it, it's important to make the first step yeah so turn more towards your body towards your nervous system in the present moment awesome and you know that was such a comprehensive answer i hope kathleen that that did help you um i just know from my own experience that uh healing your nervous system is um is it help it, it's done in layers and that's how i've experienced it it doesn't it's not a one and done you know, there are times where I now have the resources to use, I now have the tools to use, where before I was just driving in a car, and I didn't know that there was a, ge a gear shift stuck. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a gear shift that, that I could understand if I'm in drive, reverse, or, you know, park. Before I was just in a car that was just driving all over the place, and I had no idea that I could control the car, or there were gear shifts that I can use that was just always stuck in that like if you're stuck on a hill and you put your parking brake on and you're trying to push on the gas like that's how i was experiencing life not really knowing that i had the ability to be the captain of my own ship and connection to those gear shifts um so it does take a little bit of education um it does take you know working with the body uh i'm all about saying you know a mentor is very very important for nervous system work I needed a whole team. I still need a whole team of people uh, to work with. And it does take some time. So that's one of the reasons I transitioned my work is because I was doing intuitive work for 25 years. And that's a piece of it because most people who have nervous system dysregulation are also highly intuitive and gifted, right? It's just the nature of the game. And so now I want to help those intuitive people, people with talent, and intuitive awareness to actually come back home. And for me, just doing one intuitive session with somebody and giving them answers to help relieve anxiety to control their future is not really going to help long term. It's meant for guidance to give you that intuitive insight. But there's also other work that needs to be done to actually transform those patterns and to transform your life. And so Allie is one of my, you know, in my network, uh, one of those resources I offer to my clients to say, hey, in addition to your intuitive practice, in addition to your intuitive mentorship, in addition to your manifesting work, if you really want to make a change in your relationships or up level your life with finding your true purpose or just finding calm and balance and not having a scattered mindset all the time, nervous system regulation is the, the key to having some of that consistency in your life. So it really is a process and it is a slow process, but it is worth it, <laughs> I would say, to really engage. And so I think getting Allie's book is, is really important to get that education and you can get that 15% discount on her new book, Embodied Healing, using the code LAUNCH15. 
just go to her Instagram, give her a follow at awakenwithally.com. Not dot com at Instagram. <laughs> not dot com. <laughs> so just a little housekeeping on our end. We're going to be doing a lot of nervous system work on our retreat coming up on in from May 11th through 14th, 2023. It is coming up. I know you guys have heard me talk about this retreat for the last six months. And if you are thinking about it, we have a few spaces left. Uh, we're going to be doing that manifesting work in the lovely Adirondack Mountains. So it's time to get clear, get some clarity in your life, distraction free and get clear on your vision. Moving forward, we're going to be having sound healing. We're going to be having yoga opening up of your root chakra, your heart chakra. And also I'm going to be teaching live my new six step breakthrough system, which includes that nervous system work as well. So please, if you want to go into the chat, I'm going to put in a link um, here in the chat where you can uh, apply if you're interested and I will get back to you with all the details. So awesome. So thank you, um, Allie, for coming. And you were really a joy to have on the show tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Marisa. Thank you for yes. having me. And now you get to go back to sleep because <laughs> it's three o'clock, <laughs> four o'clock in the morning where you're at. Yes, awesome. it's four o'clock for me. Yes, I will go back to sleep. Thank you awesome. so, so You're much. You're welcome. For having me. Thank you everyone for coming tonight to the lounge. We're here with trauma resolution coach, coach and author Allie Wise. Just one more time. Follow her on Instagram, awaken with Allie, not.com, just awaken with Allie on Instagram. Thank you. And we will see you next week on the lounge. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks for coming.